my name is Jackie and a welcome back to my channel. Um, I am, as you can see, my setup is a little bit different today. Uh, this is going to be an empties video, but um, instead of sipping like my normal like western style steeped whatever blend, today I am actually going to be sipping this daily ginger may from a white two tea and I'm going to be sipping it with my guy wand because you know what, October has been a heck of a month. Like I feel like Oliver, who is now in junior preschool, has been sick and at home more than he has been at school trying to juggle work at home mom life again. I don't know how I did it for two years, you guys. So um, I really just have not allowed myself the opportunity to kind of like sit down and enjoy a gong fucha session. So that's what I'm doing today and talking to you guys about my empties. But before we go any further, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and smash that subscription button so you know when I upload. We like to talk about tea here. I already have my, ooh, oh my. Um, okay, I have hot water in my gaiwan, just warming it up. And I also now need to weigh, get, get my tea going. So it smells very sweet. I get something sort of like fruity floral, like maybe grape. Our grape's kind of a fruity floral. I feel like I'm also smelling some cocoa notes and maybe molasses. And so my guy one is I think 120 milliliters and I'm doing six grams of tea, 6.12. And here is a close up of, oh no. They are thin, almost wiry looking leaves and they are very dark, almost, they almost look black. I see maybe the odd golden tip in here. Oh, man. So I just took my tea leaves and put it in my warmed up guy one, gave it a shake, and uh, that kind of like releases some scents that you might not get from the tea leaves if you just smelled it out of the bag like I did just like intensifies the sense. Still smells quite sweet, quite fruity. I feel like molasses, molasses. I'm getting like more intense sense of molasses. Some maltiness and some sweet fruitiness. Ooh, my goodness. <laughs> I got some water on my glasses. Man, this became so much more savory. I'm gonna say like, I still get some hints of molasses, I still get a little bit of maltiness. Maybe like, maybe something starchy like a sweet potato. It's sort of like the sourness of grape skins. I think I'm noticing something peppery too. So we steep up to kind of like a cocoa amber color. It smells a bit like cocoa too. So like cocoa, like a savory cocoa is the very first aroma that I'm getting from this. This first infusion is fairly astringent, um, like it's leaving my tongue quite dry, but not unpleasant. I mean, I just wanna go back for another sip. I think I'm also getting like starchy, like steamed sweet potato. This is definitely a lot more savory than I expected. I mean, it's really pleasant, but it's definitely based on like what the dry tea smelled like with the, the aromas of the molasses and um, like the grape. This is definitely more savory than I had anticipated, but um, so far I'm really appreciating like the savory cocoa notes. I will start with some David's tea since I just did a whole bunch of videos about David's tea recently. I finished up the the strawberry gummy tea from David's Tea. This was one that was just like really fun to look at. 
um, because it is like, it had literal gummy bears in the blend. I mean, you kind of had to squint to tell that they were gummy bears, but they were there. And so that was just like really fun and delightful and spoke to like the five-year-old in me. Taste-wise, I mean, the second ingredient in this is hibiscus. And if you've been here for a minute, you know how I feel about hibiscus. This was the tea that I kind of knew going into it that I probably wasn't going to care for. They describe it as fruity, gummy, and tropical, and for me, it was just hibiscus overload. I feel like if you're somebody who likes hibiscus heavy teas, you'll probably appreciate this. Just once there's that much hibiscus in it, I, just everything tastes like hibiscus. I feel like a similar flavor profile to this, but maybe not quite as heavy on hibiscus would be like their Flamingo Fresco, which I absolutely loved. Um, I also tried this toasted walnut blend from David's Tea, and I avoided drinking this one for so long because I am not a huge fan of nutty flavors in teas but this one was actually really nice. I, I talk about how I'm not that keen on like flavored green teas outside of like, like a lychee flavored green tea or a rose flavored green tea, but I, I'm gonna add to that like a little asterisk and say if coconut and green tea are paired together, I'm probably gonna like it. Um, and that was sort of what this was. It was, it was definitely a nutty green tea, like a walnutty green tea but there was like the really, I love, I love the coconut that was in this as well. It just sort of like amped up that oily nuttiness of like a walnut. I do like walnuts. Those are just satisfying to chew. Is that just me? All right, next I drank this. I can't ever say this. I mean, I did. I did say it in another video. I drank this Shui Xian. Did I say that right? Honestly, the last time I said it in that video for the Tea Thoughts countdown, like, I googled how to say it, watched a YouTube video how to say it, and then sat there and said it, like, over and over and over and over again until, like, it sort of sounded like what they were saying on YouTube, and I just did not do that <laughs> today. So I think it's, um, Shui Xian. This tea, and this was just, like, roasty. It's a little bit smoky. It's a little bit minerally. And, oh, I forgot to say it. So this is from Made of Tea. And this came in a Sips by Box from, like, a million years ago. Next, I finished up a fireside chat from Plum Deluxe. And, okay, fun fact. I don't know if you are aware of this or not, but Plum Deluxe offers something called Blender's Choice, which allows whoever is packing or processing your order to pick out a tea from their collection that they think you will like based on your like that purchase as well as like your history of purchases so they sent me fireside chat and i actually i've already reviewed this this kind of tea on my channel uh earlier this year and i'm actually really happy that they sent this to me again because I loved this so much more the second time that I like drank through the bag. This is a tea that I sipped sweetened with brown sugar and I turned it into a latte and it was just so rich and cocoa-y and indulgent. Not saying that this would ever be like a staple in my stash just because like 90% of the time my staples are like simple teas but I would buy this again. Then I tried this Formosa Red Oolong from Master's Teas. I picked this one up because Brianna over at Brianna Drinks Tea raved about this on her Instagram not too long ago, or maybe it was a while ago. Gosh, I, time is just crazy right now. I mean, time this year in general was stupid. But she raved about this. I loved her tasting notes. I had to experience it for myself. So Master's Teas writes that it unrolls many layers throughout the cup that include biscuit, warm bread, honeysuckle, wild flower honey, cocoa, apricot, and a hint of lychee. And I definitely picked up notes of like freshly baked brown bread just slathered in honey. And then on the tail end of the sip, there was, um, man, I don't know if other kids did this, like there was just sort of like this like sweet floral aroma that just reminded me of my childhood and like plucking those those petals from one of those red clovers and just licking the ends of it. Like it was so delightful. I absolutely recommend this Formosa uh, Red Oolong. If you've never tried it before, this is worth, this one is worth tasting. And then the rest of my teas are from 
Adagio Teas, of course. I finished up some white peach and white blueberry from Adagio Teas, and these are just some sample packs that they include in their orders. I am not like that keen on the peach flavoring that Adagio Teas uses, so I didn't drink this one by itself. What I actually did was I mixed these two together and cold steeped them, and um, that was pretty nice. It kind of, it, it like tones down the peach in this one, draws out the blueberry flavoring in this one, and then like the white tea doesn't taste like peppery hot water. <laughs> I finished up some Genmaicha, which I'm really sad about because I, I mean, Genmaicha is just sort of a staple in my collection. I probably should just in, invest in like a, a larger bag of it because I tend to go through it pretty quickly, especially in like the colder seasons. It's like an afternoon pick-me-up, but like not a, a whole bunch of caffeine. And just like the roasty toasty puffed rice just makes me feel extra cozy. Next, I finished up a fandom tin and uh, this one is Garrus. This one is from the Mass Effect universe, which is a uh, sci-fi video game that is like one of my absolute favorites and have replayed it a kajillion times. This one is not gonna be featured on a fandom Friday episode just because I mean, I ha honestly, I have a ton of fandom tins from Adagio Tees, and they're just, not all of them are ever going to make it onto a Fandom Friday episode, just because if I don't love it, I'm not going to, I don't want to, like, bring it to you guys. And not that, like, this was a bad blend at all. This, it was, like, clove, cinnamon, chocolate, hazelnut. I would sip this one slightly sweetened and with a little bit of milk, and it tasted good, but, like, I couldn't see the connection between this blend and the character of Garrus. I love Garrus though. I almost named my cat Garrus, um, but alas, he is Fargo. Next, I finished up this uh, Ribus Cinnamon Apple from Adagio Teas, and um, I wrote about this over on my blog by Golly Ollie, so if you would like to read more about this blend, um, I will leave a link in the description box below for you. But I feel like in order to appreciate the rooibos cinnamon apple, you have to already appreciate Adagio's rooibos, which I think personally kind of leans medicinal, kind of boozy. I actually kind of thought this tasted like, like hard cider, but without the fun, but without the fun like alcohol part of it. But there we have it. I have polished off 10, 10 ish teas this this October. Definitely not as many as I thought I would considering how much I've said that autumn is prime tea drinking season. So let me know, how is your autumn going? I would love to hear from you guys. And um, let me know what are some of your favorite teas that you are sipping right now? What are some of the teas that you polished off during the month of October? I would love to hear from you. Talk to me down in the comments below. Ooh, also, if, you, if there are, are any white two tea fans, um, watching this video. Let me know what are some of your favorite white to tea teas. <laughs> Let me know what some of your favorite teas from white to tea are so that uh, the next time I place an order I know what to look out for. Um, honestly, I'm open to trying anything. So just, just let me know. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye!